Welcome to our third grading second module. In today's video, you can learn about defined terms. At the end of illustrate the needs of an axiomatic structure of a mathematical system in general, and particularly the defined terms in geometry. Get to our lesson, let's have our pretest. We're going to identify what is being asked in each question. Write the letter of the correct answer on your math notebook. Please pause the video and play it once you're done answering. Let's now check our answers. Number 1, D. Number 2, D. Number 3, B. Number 4, B. Number 5, a. Now, let us have a recap about our previous lesson. Answer the following questions and search or loop the words in the given word search. Number 1. Name the four mathematical system. Number 2. Name the three undefined terms in geometry. Now, let's have the checking. Number 1. Name the four mathematical system. We have unidentified terms. Defined terms, postulate and theorems, and axioms. And for number two, name the three undefined terms in geometry. We have point, line, and plane. Let's now start with our lesson. In your previous video, your teacher established the unidentified terms as line, point, and plane. In this video, those terms will be used to define all other terms and figures in the study of geometry. Definitions are what we used in explaining things. As line and three points that actually on the line, these are called collinear points. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. And coplanar points are points that lie on the same plane. These are called definition. Definition is an exact statement or description of the meaning of a term or word so that anyone using it will understand it in the same way. What are the reasons why we need defined terms? First is that we need to be precise and concise in what we say or write. We also need to understand each other and make sure that we mean the same thing when we say or write a particular word. Let us have an example. Give the three points that are collinear. Correct! It is points X, Y, and Z. How about the planar points? Yes, you are also correct! It is points A, X, Y, and Z. We can also say that A, X, and Y are coplanar as long as three points are on the same plane. Now, let us proceed to the other defined terms. Let's start with these figures. As you can see, the two lines do not meet or never cross at each other. These are what you call parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines in a plane that do not intersect. The symbol for parallel is represented by a two short vertical line. The yellow arrow heads indicates that the two lines are parallel. Now, what if the two lines intersect at each other and form a right angle? This is what you call perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect and form a right angles. The symbol for perpendicular is like an inverted capital letter T. Now, let's try to define other terms. Points A, B, and C are collinear points and B is at the center of line segment AC, wherein point B divides the line segment into two equal parts. What do you think it is? It is what you call a midpoint. A midpoint is a point on a line segment that divides it into two equal parts, the halfway point of a line segment. So based on our figure, 
If B is the midpoint of line segment AC, then BA is equal to BC. Or, line segment BA is congruent to line segment BC. Next, we're going to define angle. An angle is a figure formed by two rays with a common endpoint. The figure is an angle ABC or angle B. Based on the figure shown on your screen, this is also an angle because it has two rays with a common endpoint. But what kind of angle is this? This angle is what you called a right angle. A right angle is an angle whose measures 90 degrees. The square corner is used to mark a right angle. Then, the given figure, angle KAP, is a right angle. Next, we're going to define vertical angles. Vertical angles are two angles in which the sides of one angle are opposite rays to the side of the other angles. Example of vertical angles are angle HGE and angle FGD. We can also say that angle HGB and angle FGE are vertical angles. How about these figures? Is this also an angle? Yes, as you can see, in each figure there are two angles. The two angles A and B have common endpoint and they have common side. So what do you think it is? This is what you called an adjacent angle. If two angles like our example A and B have common vertex and a common side, then they are called adjacent angles. A and B are adjacent angles. Our next term is kinda related with adjacent angles. But what is the difference of the two? As you can see, their non-common sides forming a straight line or opposite trace and their sum is always 180 degrees. This figure is what you called a linear pair. Linear pair is two adjacent angles that their non-common sides forming a straight angle or opposite trace. Next are supplementary angles. If the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees, then there are said to be supplementary angles. Let us have an example. Is the given example the supplementary angle? Yes, correct! Since the measurement of angle 1 is equal to 80, and the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 100, and the measurement of angle 1 plus the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees, then, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary angles. How about example number 2? Very good! This is also an example of supplementary angles. Since angle 3 is equal to 145 degrees, and angle 4 is equal to 35 degrees, and angle 3 plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees, then angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary angles. Next is complementary angles. What is complementary angle? If the sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then they are said to be complementary angles. Does the two angles equal to 90 degrees? Correct! Since the measurement of angle 1 is equal to 20, and the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 70, and the measurement of angle 1 plus the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 90, then angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary angles. How about number 2? Is the sum of two angles equal to 90 degrees? Correct! The angle C and angle D are also complementary angles. We also have the angle bisector and the segment bisector. First, the angle is the angle bisector. When do we say that the line or ray is an angle bisector? We can say that the line or ray is an angle bisector if the line or ray divides an angle into two equal parts. Like for example, we have angle AOC. If line segment OB is an angle bisector, then we can say that measurement of angle AOB is equal to the measurement of angle BOC. Again, 
angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. Next, let's have segment bisector. This is similar to angle bisector but the line or ray bisect a line instead of an angle. Let us have an example. We have line LN. If ray KM bisect line segment LN, then LM is equal to MN. Again, segment bisector is a point, a line, or a segment that divides the segment into two congruent parts. Now, let us try to apply what we learned from this module. Write the conclusion to complete the if-then statement. Justify your answer by using the definitions. Letter A, if A is the midpoint of JM, then JA is equal to AM by the definition of midpoint. Next, if angle TSU and angle TSV form a linear pair, then angle TSU and angle TSV are adjacent angles by the definition of linear pair. Letter C, if line segment OM is perpendicular to line segment LN, then angle MON and angle LOM are right angles by the definition of perpendicular lines. And for letter D, if angle C and angle D are complementary angles and the measurement of angle C is 53, then the measurement of angle D is 37 by the definition of complementary angles. Remember that a definition is a precise statement or description of the meaning of a term or word so that anyone using it will understand it in the same way. And for your reflection, definitions play an important role not only in geometry but also in the other fields of learning, and especially in our lives. How will you define your character in facing the current pandemic situation? For our post-test, you're going to identify what is being asked in each question. Write the letter of the correct answer. You may pause the video and play it once you're done answering. Let's check your work. Here are the answers. For number 1, B. Number 2, A. Number 3, A. Number 4, B. Number 5, C. Let us now answer our activities. For our activity number 1, you're going to write through if the statement is correct and write the word false if it's not. You may pause the video and play it once you're done answering. For our activity number 2, you're going to complete each if and then statement and use definitions to give reasons in order to justify your answer. You may pause the video and play it once you're done answering. For activity number 3, in the given figure, GRAY is a rectangle. Complete the conclusion and write the reasons that will justify each of the following statements. You may pause the video and play it once you're done answering. Here are the answers for activity number 1. Here are the answers for activity number 2. Here are the answers for activity number 3. That's all. Thank you for listening.